Broadcasting live worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. And now... You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom Zev Brenner, one of my favorite guests who I've had on this program maybe close to 40 years. I remember the first time I met Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman. He was a legend then, a bigger legend today. And uh, he has he, he's done so, he's so much good for Klai Israel, for the Jewish people and beyond. So I was very pleased when this week there's a new book that came out called Living Legend, Rabbi Grossman of Migdal Amy connecting with the Nesham of Every Jew, written by Rabbi Nachman Seltzer, published by Shar Press, distributed by Arts Grow. So Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman, sixth generation Yerushalmi Jerusalemite, uh, good to have you on the. Good to have you back. I always enjoy having you on the program. So thank you for joining us again. Good work. Thank you. Good work. Shavua tov for you and for the old people that hear me. Now I want to spend some time going through the stories. This is a beautiful book, and it's a big book. But I suspect that only a fractions of the stories about you are in this book. Because I know over the course of time, I heard such wonderful stories of what you did. You've been affectionately called the disco rabbi. You've gone to prison, to jails. You've been honored by the government of Israel. You've been, by the Gedolim, really respect you. And you're also honored by secular Jews. And so you're able to, to, to really be on all sides. You're really a Havas Yisrael uh, Harav, which is tremendous to see because in today's day and age, we have so much polarization. People don't get along with each other, but you're just the opposite. You're not afraid to give somebody a kiss and to, and to really show your love for them. This is the true is that Rabbi Kiva says, What means klal gadol b'Torah? This is the point from Judaism. I say, I say it at one time, the, the, the Gemara tells us the story with Ilel that Hillel and no Jewish come to him and said to him, I want to convert myself of one foot right away. And Hillel tell him the mitzvah from Boavto l'reyach ha'kamocha. Question is, if, if a no Jew come to him and to Megaya or convert, you have tayag mitzvahs. I come that you give him only one mitzvah and say, finish, I can be. What is the meaning? The meaning is, of course, this goy is understand that the Torah is very large. Tariyag mitzvahs, you need to teach learning day and night for years. But he speaks to Ilan and say, give me the point from Judaism. One, this is the this is the message. One al regel aras, one foot. What means the regel aras? Tell me what is a Jew. And Ilan want to explain that a Jew is. A life from spiritual, not from physical. Because when somebody lives physical, can exhibit the mitzvah, love your brother like you love yourself. Because everybody loves himself in, 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 in uh, physical, everybody loves himself. But only when you believe that your life is a life from spiritual, you have a neshome. If the life for the Jew is neshama, is the soul, spiritual, then your soul and my soul is the same soul. I give an example. Let's say if somebody will say, the sun, Hashem, again, the sun belongs to me. Why? Because you don't see that the sun come in my home. But what is the answer? In the same sun, Shemesh, that come to you, come to your neighbor. In, in the same window from you, that come in the, the sun to you, it's the same sun, the same neshome that you have, I have. If you believe in them, then you understand that every Jew is uh, important, every Jew is your brother, together, bonim atem l'ashem elokeichem, and then the same thing that when you love yourself, 
you need to love your brother. So, al ragal achat, on one foot, I want to ask the Rav, how did you end up, you were sixth generation from Jerusalem. Your parents were, your father was a big Rav, your mother was active in Yerushalayim. How did you end up in Migdal Ha'amek, and you end up starting Migdal R, which has really helped so many children become productive adults, and you give them such. I, I was, I don't know if you know, I was a Migdal or maybe 35 years ago, 30 years ago. I don't know if the Rav was there, but the, your brother was there. I saw the work that you did then. You're so much bigger today. You've accomplished, you've saved so many lives. How did this happen? A regular chat, how did this happen on one foot? A regular chat in 1967 was the war they called the Six Day War. The Six Day War before the war, Israel thinks that Israel is finished. Everybody that has a passport left Israel. I can explain you what happened before the war. In because the all Arab nations attacked in one time Israel, Egypt, Lebanon. Syria, uh, 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 Yarden, everybody. God makes a miracle. Six days not to believe Israel succeeds to all Arab nations and take back the old Jerusalem. And two weeks after the Shavuos, they open up the gate to go to the Kotel Amarami, to Western Wall, and the gate from, from Jaffa, Jaffa Gate in Yerushalayim, thinking one minute that it, it, Thousands of thousands of thousands of people waiting 10 o'clock. The government opened up the Jaffa gate and thousands of thousands of people running to the cotton. Nobody knows who is the cotton. I was between the thousands of people. I come there to the cotton. I mean, I, I, only when Mashiach will come, will come back this picture. The cotton, you know, when I grew up in Yerushalayim, what was speaking in the home? We used to go to the Kotel, we used to get my grandmother, my father, my mother, or Kotel. And here you stay by the Kotel. Then I speak to myself and I say, what can I give back a, a, a thankful for God for this miracle? And then I decided to leave Yerushalayim and to go to the worst place in this time in Israel from crime and drugs, but was in Migdal Aimik. Because since I've been 16 years old, I have a special feeling for the Sfaradim. And it used to be near Meya Sharim, a little village that called Musrara, between Meya Sharim and the old city. And there was a very, very hard place. The, the Black Panthers come from this place. And since I've been 16 years old, I used to help them and take them home and speak to them, have a feeling. Then we come to the hotel, I decided I will leave. I was then in by the time for the hotel, I was then, my age was 22, and I've been married. And I say, I will leave Yerushalayim and go to Migdal Amy because every day you see in the papers problems in Migdal Amy, somebody killed seven people, this and this. Oh, then I come to Migdal Amy to take a look. You know, I've been naive. I come from Mea Sharim. Mea Sharim, every building is a kolel, a yeshiva, Talmud Torah. I come to Megdala Emek and I say, who is the yeshiva? They look at me, <laughs> yeshiva, who is Talmud? Who can I find the youngsters? They say the disco. Disco, man, never in my life I hear the disco, the language disco. In Mea Sharim, we don't know what disco. I think maybe it's a new name for yeshiva called disco. <laughs> I go to the yeshiva disco, come in, and I see Purim in the middle of the day, you know, everybody is dancing, girls, boys, red, blue. They see me come in, they can't believe uh, somebody with beard and payers, a schwarz, a couple of, what are you doing here? They're thinking maybe somebody died in the street, I look for a minion. I say I come here because you're my brothers, I want to leave you. you what? Everybody here has a dream to go to Jerusalem. Do you come from Jerusalem? Yes, you're my brother, I will be with you. And for the first minute, became like a magnet between me and the youngsters. And I used to go every night to the disco and my 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 cone and speak to them. Then you, they started to come to my home Friday night to be together, Shabbos. And then somebody tell me, my brother's in jail. I say, your brother's my brother. I go to the jail. First time I come in a jail called Shata, 400 prisoners. I can explain you the feeling there's not to believe Moshe, Yaakov, it's gone. 
Jewish boys in jail. I go to the manager from the jail, the Faked, and say, I want to come twice a week to teach the boys at the Pilke Ovest. Learning to, I don't ask for money. I volunteer, started volunteer twice a, a week in jail. In little by little, this program from learning with the prisoners became so infected in the prisoners, they changed them in, in, in the started to be a movement. Right now, I speak to, the, to you right now in Motsi Shabbos, this moment, we have in the old prison, right now, more than 1,000 prisoners in this program, yeshivas. You have yeshiva in every prison in Israel. They say the program from, from the system, from the prison in Israel, the government says that is the most successful program. 80% don't go back to jail. And this is my work for four years, till 1972. To my work in the discos, in the streets, in the jails, I see many times when I speak to a prisoner, to a crime, people, he has an ashome, he has a feeling. I come that he's doing what he's doing. But when I look in inside and I hear his story and I see he grew up in a home, never have education, never have love. I make one time a Hanukkah party in jail. When I leave the jail, I give a kiss one from the prisoners. Two days later, I write me a letter. Rabbi, I sit in my soul, I cry. This is my, this is the, the man that you give him, the prisoner that you give him a kiss. I want that you know that it's the first time in my life that I receive a kiss from somebody. This, this letter make me, I can explain you, to see a man in the age 40 that never receive a, a kiss, I say, Rabbi Nishlul, help me. I want to build a place for these kids. They will receive kids. They will receive love in education, including, and from this idea, we started in 1972, Migdalo. Today, Baruch Hashem, we have more from 22,000 graduates to the old 50 years. Thousands of, of kids, and everything changed. Migdalo, Migdala, Hemig, the crime is go down. 90%. And today, we have two places in Israel that keep up Shabbat clear. Bnei Brak and Migdalem. Can you believe, can you believe that uh, uh, two uh, gas stations in, Migd in Migdalem for themselves, they make, they make uh, a signs. Tachana Shomer Shabbat. Wow. This is, this is the, the al regal Achas, the old, the old, coming to Migdal Amik. When, because I know that you've had influence, and we'll talk about it, you have influence on so many people that you showed the love what Judaism is all about. And I discovered a secret for the first time is that at the at around 13 years of age, you learned under the legendary Rabbi Ari Levine, the, the tzaddik, the saint of Jerusalem, who I admire greatly, who was a rabbi of the prisoners. So in a sense, you're following in his footsteps, in a sense. This is true that uh, Rabbi Bar Yalabin, I have not to explain who was this man. It's like a, a Malach Elohim. From Angel one side, he was, he, he, was, he was a Goen and a Tzaddik, but he spent his time in the prison, in the sick people. He gives his whole life for these people that need help. And of course, that make him me a big pressure. When I've been Zoyche, he was the Mashgit, the time when I learned in the Shiva's Eitz Chaim in Yerushalayim, in, ben Yu, in, in Rehov, Yafo, and he was then, in, in he, in mit, mit his behaving, he teaches, he don't need to say, when you see this man, I behaving to people, everybody, religious, not religious, in, in walking day and night to give a feeling from love for people, of course, this is a big blessing. It certainly is, and we're speaking about Yitzhak David Grossman, who is a legend. I've interviewed him and known him for almost close to 40 years, and I'm so pleased that 
There's a book that just came out and it doesn't do him justice. It only has some of the stories and we'll continue talking to him. It's called Living Legend, Rabbi Grossman of Migdal HaEmek, Connecting with the Neshama of Every Jew. It's written by Rabbi Nachman Seltzer. It's published by the Sharp Press. It's distributed by Art Scroll. And if you want to get this book, and I highly recommend it, you can call 1-833. It's toll free. 1-833. R. Grossman. That's 1-833-R. Grossman. You can also order the book online at rabbigrossmanbook.com. Easy way to remember. You get a discount too. rabbigrossmanbook.com or 1-833-R. Grossman. You'll enjoy this book. I'm enjoying it immensely. We're going to be right back. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk Line Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talk Line network and Talk Line's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner with us right now is Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman. He is the founder of Migdal HaEmek, the chief rabbi of Migdal R. He is renowned throughout the world. He is a sixth-generation uh, Jerusalemite, Yerushalmi, and uh, he has accomplished so much. He's respected by the right and by the left, by the secular and by the religious, from the biggest gedolim to the uh, prime minister of the state of Israel. He's been awarded many prestigious awards, including by the state of Israel, where he received the Presidential Medal of Honor from Shimon Peres in 2014. He's the subject of a book called Living a Legend, Rabbi Grossman of Migdal HaEmek, Connecting with the Neshama of Every Jew, Rabbi Nachman Seltzer. It's, it's put out by Shar Press, distributed by Art Scroll. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Lots of great pictures in there, lots of wonderful stories, even though it's only a fraction. I know Rabbi Grossman for so many years. It's only a fraction of what he's actually done. He's known as affectionately as the disco rabbi. He's gone to jails, rehabilitated prisoners. He's able to really do amazing things, and that's why he's so respected. So Rabbi Grossman, I'm looking through the book and there's so many great pictures of you with uh, such great personalities from different rabbanim and rebbe's uh from uh the vigilance of rebbe to the touch of a rebbe to uh, schneider cutler and it's a rebbe it's a tough to be wise from yakov kamenetsky just to name some of the few you have so many you have the Sephardic rabbis and you also have pictures with all the leading luminaries of the state of israel from prime minister sharon to prime minister bibi Netanyahu to it's rabin to Bill Clinton to Nathan Sharansky to Menachem Begin, Yitzhak Shamir, and so many others. Of course, Prime Minister Shimon Peres, when he was Prime Minister, uh, he was at a Migdal or a dinner. So, what's your secret? How are you able to bridge the gap where you're respected by all these such diverse people? You probably can't get them all in one room, but yet you're able to be comfortable with all of them. What's your secret? What I think. Bezrat Hashem festival, when I come, I became the chief rabbi in Migdal Emek in 1970. I was there, she was there 24. In, 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 I was the youngster chief rabbi in Israel, never happened. In, I take off myself two points. One point, not to take money in any issue for mitzvahs, let's say if I make weddings, bar mitzvah, levias, never, 50 years, never take one penny from anybody here. They will know that if I do something, I do this for the Shem Shomayim. Secondly, not to be involved in any politics, not right, not left, not religious, not, not religious. In the old book is only to save the kids in Baruch Hashem, right now more than 20,000 graduates in Migdalor. Today, working in Migdalor, 900 people, 80% from them grew up in Migdalor. This 
point that I was not involved in politics, then they understand the old people that they are not afraid for me. They can be left and right and do I will not use this for any reason, only to help the kids. And when they hear and see that the old crime in the Galagli is going down 90%, the change from the place, they don't understand what happened here, what I come. And thank God, Baruch Hashem, Siata Dishmaye, they come and they visit, and they see me the eyes in Migdalor, will visit every president, from Rabin to, to Perez to, to Shamir, Arik, in, in Bibi, of course, in, 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 in all, all, all uh, the uh, presidents, uh, Herzog, in, in, uh, in Navon, in Rubin, in, in everybody, when they come, and they see me the eyes, what happened, they became close, they became, they understand that this is a place that saved the kids in Israel, the problem kids. And, and they became honor and became friends. And Mamesh, uh, I was very friends. And the most important that you need to speak to yourself, every Jew is as an Ishome, is a son from God, you need to know that I, I tell you something. I tell many people, I never see a not religious Jew. They look in community, my friends from Meir Sharim, they can't believe what you speak. Because I see many, many times that people, they're very far, but if you come close to them and you speak to them, they, they, they change, they, they do it, they, they feeling, they have their heretz. I don't know if you remember the story with the 700 power troops in, what, in Lebanon Bowl. You remember the story? It's a great story. Please share with our audience where they came to you and these are soldiers, not religious, yes. some were. Yes. And it's a great story. So please share it again. Yes. The, the, the story was in the, in the second Lebanon Bowl, I received a telephone call from somebody in Yerushalayim. And he tell me that his son is a power troop. And he go to visit his son in the base from the army called Sirkin, near Petah Tikve. And he find in this base 700 power troops. They be called to go into Lebanon. And they be called to come to this base for one day, make ready. The end, because the government don't decide that right away to fight. Ulmert was the prime minister. And then they stuck in this place in a hunger for 10 days. Can you, can you imagine 700 power troops in a hunger, hunger from, from tanks, not sleep normal, not make a shower, no shower, no eating. This father, he, he go, is, is come down broken. He called me and say, Rabbi, they lost their motivation. This is what can we do? I say, what we can do? I invited everybody from them to come right away to my place in Migdal or in Migdal Ayamek. After six hours, the all 700 power troops arrived to Migdal Ayamek. I go to the boys in, in a cell, tell them that the soldiers is coming and they left one building. They go to be together with the with other kids in the under dormitories. Map. One, more, more, one dormitory free, free, and they come, and when they come, they have ne next to the school, they have a, a swimming pool. Right away, when they go out from the buses, you know, this is left guys, cookies, uh, kibbutznikim, everybody the, in the beginning, but they know they go to Rav Grossman in Migdalem, in, in, in the way from, from Tel Aviv to here, they started to, to, to scream, why, go to rabbi, will make a balchuba, you know. But they come in, I say to them, first of all, everybody goes to the, to the brecha, you know, to the swimming, swimming pool. pool. Never swimming. Yeah. Oh, thank God, they don't send, they don't send, send us to the, to the synagogue, to the swimming pool. Oh, this is a, and then in the night, I make him a barbecue party with Hasidish music. And they dancing, and they happy. In the middle, one from the officers 
he became a telephone call from his uncle in France. And the uncle hears music. He says, you crazy in Israel? You're going into army with music? He says that Rav Gosma brought us here in Migdal Amik. This man became so, so excited. He says, I want to speak to the rabbi. He tell me, Rabbi, I, I, I order a new Sefer Torah, $40,000 that Spain, Yerushalayim, for my place in France. And I'm so excited what you're doing with the soldiers. I decided this moment, spontaneously, I don't take the Torah to France. I give us a gift for you, Migdalo. I, I speak to these soldiers, see what uh, uh, present me receive in you, honor. I started to sing more. I call the sofer. I tell them, seven o'clock in the morning, please brought the Torah to finish the year. Seven o'clock, he brought the Torah. I go in in the dining room, 700 power troops eating breakfast. I say, guys, the gift that I receive in you honor is here, the Torah. Everybody from you that want to have a letter on the Torah can go over to the sofa and he will write a letter for you for the Torah. Dev, you will not believe 700 guys, mostly left far. Nobody says no for themselves. They stay in the line for hours to have a letter in the Torah. Then the kids in Migdalo make ready shekels in nylons. And I speak to them, I say, Shliach mitzvah ain't on izokim. Shliach mitzvah. I, I want to give you which, this shekel. Let me just translate, which means that somebody who's on the way of doing a mitzvah, good deed, doesn't get harmed. So if you're in the process of doing a mitzvah, then you're protected by heaven. Right. Then, then I say to them, everybody that you want can have the shekel. Keep the shekel that after the vote, you will give us food stock. Eh? That means that the old time that you vote, you have a mission to give us food stock. Eh? Everybody stays in the line. They want to have the shekel. I will met, uh, make you a court and shout that says after a couple days, they receive an order. They need to go in Lebanon, you know, power troops. They're going to, the um, army put them in, inside to fight inside. And they go into the bosses, everybody has a missile of his uh, soldier, of us, a home of uh, uh, the shoulder, yeah. Yeah. And this became very nervous and serious. And before they go to the boss, I speak to them. I say, guys, you show God that you believe in God, you have a letter on the Torah. You shliach mitzvah. You're going to fight for Am Israel, for Eretz Israel. I promise you that everybody from you will come back safely. Nobody will be wounded and nobody will be killed. If you ask me, Zev, I can I speak for 700 soldiers that are going to fire in the war to say they come back? I don't know. This I was so emotionally that I speak. But I say to them, I want from you one thing. If my blessing come true, after the war, you don't go home to your wife, to your kids, to your parents. You come back here, drink Lechaim, thank God, and go. The palmist. Se ten days later, 12 o'clock in the night, I receive a telephone call from the chief of this group. And he says, Rabbi, your blessing come true. I can tell you the miracles. The whole group, the 700 power troops, nobody is affected. Right now, we sit in the buses in Shtula. Shtula is the border from Lebanon. We can move. We have another. The palmist that me come to you. Two third in the morning, we will be by you. <laughs> I, call, I call the people in the kitchen. Stay up. We need food. The people are coming. We need to give them a, a soda. Then I call music for weddings. I call to the music, I say, can you be two thirty in Migdala Emic? This manager from the music says, what? Who is going to dance two thirty? Mashiach is coming. What happened here? I say, I will pay you how much you want. I received the music from Afula. Two thirty, they arrived. The music is started to singing. They go out from the buses and start to go right away 
to the to the dormitory, take a shower, they come to me, they kiss it and I kiss them. Fourteen hundred kisses this night. Fourteen <laughs> in the two wow. sides. Wow. Two wow. sides. In, in 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 the state line, one somebody stayed in the line and says, Rabbi, I need to tell you a story right away. I in a group from soldiers became to do a mission in the village in Lebanon, in, in a soldier make a mistake and put in the flashlight, in the Hezbollah, find out that the, the Jewish army there, they sent a missiles against us. He says, I will not religious. Rabbi, I promise you, I swear you, certainly two horses, two horses arrived from the village. The horses jumped against the missile, they destroyed themselves, but they pushed the missile in another way in the saving doll guys. They see miracles. We dancing the whole night. Till then they so close to me they, I go to the weddings, bar mitzvahs and everything. But what I buy I tell you this story. I see in my eyes that every Jew has Judaism inside. Not really when you say to him, make a letter in the Torah you will never believe that these guys will be ready to wait two hours to have a letter to take its docker. Every Jew is a Jew. This is the secret. We're speaking with Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman. He is the chief rabbi of Migdal HaEmek. He is the founder of Migdal Or, which has taken kids from broken homes, transformed their lives over decades. They've been in the Israeli army and great rabbis and everything in between. And his, the subject of a wonderful book. He is a living legend, and this book doesn't do it fully, Jessica. He has so many stories that he can tell you. The book only has some of them, but I highly recommend it's called Living Legend, Rabbi Grossman of Migdal Amik, Connecting with the Neshama of Every Jew, written by Rabbi Nachman Seltzer. It's put out by Shar Press, distributed by Art Scroll. And you can get the book by calling 1-833-R-Grossman, 1833 R. R. Grossman. You can also go to rabbigrossmanbook.com, rabbigrossmanbook.com. You get a discount. That's a great book. I highly recommend it. It has loads of pictures. And you see Rabbi Grossman, some of the leading personalities in the Jewish world, both Israel and America and all over, from leading rabbis to leading political figures. And it's chock full of great, great stories. I highly recommend this book. Again, you can call right now, one 833 Grossman or log on to rabbigrossmanbook.com. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Hi, this is David Gabe, and you're listening to The Zev Brenner Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner. Our guest is a living legend. In fact, the book came out called Living Legend, Rabbi Gross from Migdala Amik, Connecting with the Neshama of Every Jew. Rabbi Nachman Seltzer wrote the book. It's put out by Sharp Press, distributed by Art Scroll. You can get it by by calling 1-833-R-Grossman or online at rabbigrossmanbook.com. I know Rabbi Grossman for so many years. He's he's really amazing in how he's able to. He's been affectionately called the disco rabbi. He's gone into jails. He's not afraid to put himself out for another Jew, and that's why he's respected from right and left, from leading rabbis to leading elected officials. And he's not afraid to give somebody a kiss and a hug, and it's transformative of people. So let me ask this question, Ray Grove. There's a great story, which I have not heard, but it's in the book, um, yeah. where you're on an airplane, and you kiss somebody, you give them an affectionate kiss. You know, a, a one is like like a spiritual leader gives to somebody, and that person gave, what, a million dollars to make dollar your institution? What happened? Well, well what happened... I received the Israel Prize from the government from Israel. That is the first time they give us a religious uh, man. You know, this is the biggest prize, like Nobel Prize in the world is in Israel. And it was making a big impression on television since Yom Atzmaut. And two weeks later, I fly to America. I come to El Al. And Elal says, Rabbi, Mazel Tov, Chatan Pras Israel, is in Hebrew. It means the Chatan Pras Israel, you receive this prize. We want also to give you a gift. 
to upgrade to the first class. I never go first class, but they give me upgrade. I sit in the first class with six six uh, chairs there, seats, six seats. I sit in the one corner, nobody's next to me. In the middle, in the other corner comes a couple and sit there. The plane take off. I don't know why, but God make us never do like this. I stay up, go over to this man, and I, and I tell him, Shalom, my name is Rabbi Grossman. I used to call the disco rabbi, I walk with kids, walk and over. Maybe you would like to see my story. I want, I have here uh, what you call a, uh, 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 but you show the pictures, a DVD. I have a DVD to show you. Say, okay, it's there, he, has not, he cannot move. He says, I don't know where to go. Okay, I, I take the table in the plane, put in the DVD, and he looks in and his vibe. After eight minutes, I come to take back the DVD. And you know, in this first class, you have a, a button in the in the, by the chair, and aside from the chair, you have a button. If you push this button, the the, the chair became like a bed, you know, like right, to sleep. Right. That's first class, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, and I make a mistake. One end I take the DVD, and the other end I push this bottle, and right away I make him leg down, you know. <laughs> and it, it, it became <laughs> a shock, you know. <laughs> what you're doing to him, leg went down. And I also became very not comfortable. You know, you let down somebody, you know what? In, 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 in like it leaks, is 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 like a leaking. I give him a kiss in the in the in the metzach, what you call the, it? The, the, head. For, the forehead, the forehead, the forehead. I give him a kiss and I say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and I take back the chair. And I take, go to my place and I speak to myself, why are you doing things like this? Why are you doing that? Okay. Five minutes later, he stay up, come to my place with his wife and says, Rabbi, I want that you know, I put away a big amount of money to help this issue from kids from broken homes. I've been a friend with Bibi. I've been a friend from the Jewish agency. They show me many ideas I don't like. Ask my wife. I make a sign with God. If somebody will come that is woke with the kiss and he will give me a kiss in my head, this is the man that I need to give him the money. Can you believe the story? Wow. Like this? Well, how much money was it? This, this was the end was around three million dollars. Three million dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's an amazing story. But what, what happened what happened before the, I go to Elal, I decided to build a big, a big uh, what you call campus for the girls. And this campus is going to cost around eight million dollars. And you can have a movie. When I sound, when I sound with the builders, the, 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 what you call them, a scam, the Jose, the, um, are you saying English to Jose, the agreement, you want to with the, with the, with the builders. Are you talking about the, con build. the contract with the builders? Right, the contract. I sound the contract. You see me sign, I have up my eyes to God and say, the boy I signed and you will pay. <laughs> and in this time, I have many, I have only pledges for half million dollars. I have nothing. In this three million dollars, he gives to build this campus, helping building this campus from the girls. And I see because I say, God, you will pay. God makes that I will go and Allah will give me the first class. I will make a mistake and lay him down and give him a kiss in his metzach in his head. In, in, because he says to God, Palmas, that if somebody gives him a kiss, I will give him, this is the the Ashkoche Protis, Hashem makes that they will have the $3 million to build this building. Divine, amazing story. You know, one of my favorite stories 
is about Manhattan. You're known as a disco rabbi. And Rabbi Riskin has said this story on the air, but I want to hear it directly from you, about when you were in Lincoln Square Synagogue, you're, walking, you're taking a walk, and Rabbi uh, Riskin doesn't want you to pass by an Israeli-owned disco. You said, no, we're walking by. So pick up the story. What happens when you and Rabbi Shlomo Riskin of Lincoln Square Synagogue are walking on the west side of Manhattan? What, what takes place? That would happen in this time. Rabbi Riskin was very famous, and it was in Lincoln Square Synagogue. Yes. Yes, he used to have hundreds of people, especially youngers, youngsters. And he invited me to come to him for Shabbat. And he take me to his home for Friday night. But the synagogue has a room in a hotel, not too far from his home. And I, he make me ready to sleep in the hotel, but he eat by him at home. I eat by him at home Friday night. And you know, we speak, singing around 11 o'clock, he take me to the hotel. Going to the hotel, I see a, a building, a big building, and many people there, and they speak Igbo. I ask, what is this place? He says, this is a disco, Israeli disco called Tel Aviv. I say to Rabbi Riskin, Shlomo Riskin, I say, let's go in. He's looking at me like, 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 Crazy. I, I go with the Streimel, Chavez, Siddish, go in Friday night at disco. I say, I want to show you what, what, what to, to see something they sold from the people. Let's go. Okay, I convince them. I go in, you know, the music is walking, the DJ, the people dancing. I come in. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi, Shalom Aleichem. Two minutes, everything stopped. Guys, in Ibu, I come here from Israel. I want to speak to you. Please sit down. Everybody sit in the floor. And I started to speak to them and singing with them. And we stay there more than two hours. Then we going to sleep. Rabbi Riskin tell me, this place used to be open in Kippur. After my be there, tomorrow, the around maybe 12, say, hello, how much guys come to the synagogue? They started to come to be connected, and then they closed. The next team keeper was closed, and after them, I don't know Shabbat what happened. And this, this, this is the story. And he, Rabbi Riskin put this in in his book because he can't believe to see these guys in two minutes, and when they have a, a, a feeling that you care for him, you don't look in them down. You remember that he's a Jew. And they started to sing with them. They want to ask no more and more. They ask questions by Yiddish guide, questions by the Haredim, questioning the issue from the army, from the Israel, in singing, in speaking. This is my this is my 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 message to everybody that every Jew is a Jew. Israel Afal Pishoto Israel. Even every when a Jew, Jew sins, is... they're still Jewish. No, you we don't they're part of our people, no matter who they are. That's right. a beautiful the, thing. No, you walk need to be to feel everybody close to you is a brother. And then when you have this feeling and you give him, this is the you can make him connected and you can walk brought him back, Hashem. Such a wonderful story, and this just we're just giving people a taste of what Rabbi Grossman has done over the course of time, reaching out. You have love of that's really the key is you don't look down on anybody, and even Migdalar, your institutions. Before I let you go, Rabbi Grossman, what would you say is the most famous graduate or graduates of Migdalar, where they left from they came from a broken home and became such a productive member of society? Any names or any stories pop to mind? I can tell you not as not a, a stories of stories, Baruch Hashem. We have doctors and lawyers, we have rabbis, we have uh, members in the Knesset, we have uh, everything what left it. I'll give you an example. I tell you before, maybe today, 900 people walk in Migdalo, 80% grew up in Migdalo. I will tell you a story from the Morosha Koilin. The Rosh Koilel is the name is Arab Yosef Gigi. He's a Goen and a Tzadik. This boy is from the 18th boy that we started Migdalo in 1972. This boy comes from a home, not any connection with religious. Very bad and very poor. In, I can explain you from Teveria. After two months, this boy comes to me, Yossi, and says, 
Rabbi, I leave. Migdalor, I can stay, I go back, finish. I give him money and say to him, you have 15 minutes from this moment till you will come to the bus station to Teveria. In these 15 minutes, you're going to decide what will be with you, your life, are you wife for looking, your kids, your grandchild, Oilom Aze, Oilom Abe, everything depends in these 15 minutes. Take the money, you decide it, and, and if you're going, go. If you want to come back, come back. After an hour, he comes back and gives me back the money and says, I decided to stay. Right away, I go in, in the school, it was 18 boys, and I make a song. Right away, Ezo, Ezo, Gibo, Akobesha, Titzro. Ezo, Ezo, Gibo, Akobesha, Titzro. Explain in Hebrew, who is the Gibo that is Koibesha, Titzro? Who is the hero that conquers his evil inclination, yes. Then he started, today, this Yossi Gigi is the Rosh HaKoilel of 150 Hoshi Ben Yungelait. He, he makes a couple books of Toire and Aloche. He's a dining for Sidim. He's the Rosh Koilel in Migdal Eimek. In, in the, uh, six months ago, he make a bar mitzvah for his grandchild. I come to the bar mitzvah, was a hun around a hundred people sitting there, the, you know, the boys, and the, he asked, the, okay, maybe, I don't know, eight kids, and Mary, and the, the, the son in law everybody. And I look around and I say, Yossi, can I say, Rav Yossi, can I say this story? I tell this story, I don't say that this is Yossi. When I finish, I say, you know, is the boy that come back? This Rabbi Yossi, and I say to Yossi in the front from ever in the front from everybody, Yossi, Rabbi Yossi, these fifteen moments, if you will lost, you will not see everything what you see here. You see the all hundred people, kids in grandchildren, in colors, in Hassanim, in the breeders, the old formula changed only because you used these fifteen minutes to have the right decided to come back. Amazing stories. Our guest is Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman. He's a legend, and you see he has a love of everyone, and that's why he's respected by right and left. He, as he mentioned, he received in 2014 the Israeli Presidential of Honor, Medal of Honor from Shimon Peres. Uh, he also is awarded the Lover of, it, Lover of Israel Award by Menachem Begin. He has so many awards. He's respected by right and left. And uh, we can spend hours and days. In fact, one book doesn't do justice. There has to be many books. But certainly I recommend the latest book that came out. It's called Living Legend, Rabbi Grossman of Migdal Amik Connecting with the Neshama of Every Jew. It's uh, written by Rabbi Nachman Zeller. It's uh, put out by Sharm Press, and it's distributed by Art Scroll. If you want to get a copy of the book, you can call right now. 833-R-Grossman, 833-R-Grossman. You can also go online to rabbigrossmanbook.com. That's rabbigrossmanbook.com. The book is chock full of pictures, great stories. And really, if you want a, a, an inspiring personality, and I know Rabbi Grossman for close to 40 years, so, you know, this is not, some books are, are fluff. This book is real. I know some of the stories. And with the Rabbi Riskin story, just a case in point, amazing, amazing life that he's led and conducting. He's an inspiration and inspiring for many people. So RabbiGrossmanBook.com, if you want to get this book, it's a, you get a discount, or call one 833 R. Grossman, 833 R. Grossman. Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman, it's been an honor to have you on this program. We look forward to having you back again and much continued success. And may God give you the strength for many more years to come to continue your holy work. As I said, you're, you're, you're a living legend because you're able to bridge your love, religious, non-religious. You don't care who they are, and you go all out for them. And that's something very, very special. So we hope people learn from you because our society needs to learn your lessons. But uh, And if you read the book, people get an idea what it's all about. Zev, first of all, thank you. And, and I want to bless you and you all people that hear right now this program in Klalisol, Metachak, Kosho, Vesameach. And let's pray. Chazal tell us, Benissen Nigalu, 
u benisin a tidin li goel, to pray that we will zoicha zain soon, to the geula shleime, omein. Omein, and we should get rid of COVID, right? That should be history. We pray for that right. too. Rabbi Yisadavah Grossman, thank you so much for being with us and look forward to having you back in the Chag Kashu Sameach and a good Yantif. Amen, amen. Call to, call to. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community.